record on this computer. All right, so again, welcome everybody. Um, you can't hear me at all. And my, I've got my uh, speaker going, so it might be some something to do with your connection. Can you hear me now? All right, cool. So um, like I said, Thursday, I'm gonna have to redo that Zoom about Florida, uh, about the article that I sent today and I signed on newsela.com um, and uh, that whole theme about uh, Florida itself. It's no biggie, I'll do that probably um, during my office hours tomorrow at some point and then just upload that to YouTube. All these, as you guys remember, um, most of you guys are coming pretty consistent, so you probably don't need this too much, but um, my lessons go up on YouTube, on a public uh, YouTube. Um, I have some from the summer as well, if you want to check any of those out, which will have all of the attachments to them as well. Um, I try to make it all easy for you. If, if the subject matter is about Florida, I want to have a bunch of attachments about that so you can... Um, go from there. Today we're looking at prefixes and suffixes. Um, super fun stuff. Let's look though. I was doing attendance and uh, I'm not going to use the word disappointed, but I had to add, um, not had to add, but was some people had not started the diagnostic for uh, IXL.com, which is totally fine. Again, you're kind of going to get what you put into this program. So the more that you put into this, the better. Um, uh, and if you utilize that, I think you'll see some good outcomes. So let me screen share, or share the screen with um, Look, so our IXL diagnostic, I have, um, I think a total of 14 or 15 students and we have uh, eight that have done the diagnostic. Uh, Diona, you just started, so I'm not, <laughs> uh, what happened here? Is it loading for you too? Technical difficulties. All right, let me put my password in again. Side. All right, so the diagnostic area. Um, can't stress that enough. I would continue to keep going to that because you want to see uh, your levels and see what is uh, recommended that you uh, focus on. Okay, um, so Robert's here too, and Diona. So it, once you guys get going on that, I have some that haven't even started it. Mandy, we got to start that. I know you're on here, uh, and a couple of people as well. Um, and then again, we're, this is totally fine if not that you want to take weeks off or anything like that. But we have students who have indicated, hey, I was uh, two weeks on business, and I'm not going to be able to be. Um, in class, even though we're not physically in class. And that's totally fine. Um, again, this is your pace. You wanna do it at your pace. But today when we're talking about prefixes and suffixes, um, we want to think about that as building your vocabulary. Uh, and I think about it as like Legos. You have like a part of a Lego, which is the word, and you can add different parts to that word, whether at the beginning or at the end of it. And in so doing, you've now created new vocabulary words. So if you were to ask me, hey, you know, Mr. Turner, what's one way or one of the best ways that you can increase your, purely your vocabulary, I got to say it's, it's learning prefixes and suffixes. Um, because in so doing, you can um, not necessarily double or triple, but right around that number. Um, if you can memorize some of these prefixes and suffixes. Um, and we're going to go over a couple of blurbs on that. And I'll give you, I'm going to screen share a couple of documents with you. These will um, be in a, um, I will email these documents to you. 
I'm also going to email this. This is from, I, I like this website. It's worksheetswork.com. It's literally a map of Florida. We talked about Florida. We went over Florida and you are supposed to put with this um, kind of like word bank, all of these items together. I'm also going to include the answer key, which is crazy. You don't hear a lot of teachers doing that. I don't want to give you something where there's not also the ans answers, but give it the good old fashioned try like this is got to be Tallahassee. That's a capital. Here's your major cities here and here and here. You should be able to under, um, know them as well. So that'll be included in your, um, in your, um, in the documents that I send you as well. I'm going to send you this one. This is the most common prefixes. And I think of them as like, this is as close to math as you get. So if you know that um, you're looking at this word antifreeze, freeze is the, would be the root word. So we'll be familiar with that terminology. And if you knew that anti or something that starts, a word that starts with A-N-T-I means against or opposite, you would know that antifreeze is something that prevents or is against freezing. So I think of it as anti plus freeze. And the meaning is anti is against, against being frozen. Okay. Um, and these are the most common prefixes and most common suffixes. You'll have this document. Just to go over some other ones, you have D. So opposite, defrost means the opposite of frost. Dis can mean not or opposite. So disagree means to not agree. You're starting to see a pattern, I hope. E, uh, e N, and M are cause to, so encode or embrace. For, at the beginning of a word, so like forecast means to, like your daily forecast or your weekly forecast um, that meteorologists do, that is a prediction before it actually happens. I love what they do too, because half the time they're wrong. Uh, in and M means in, so in field is within the field. Uh, in and M, I, L, and I, R can also mean not. So injustice means not having justice. Impossible means not being possible. Inter, I always think of between, so you have interaction. Intercontinental uh, highway is a highway that goes between the, the continents, okay? Mid means middle, miss means wrongly, so misfire means that it's not firing up correctly or it's um, misfiring. Non means not, so nonsense means not having any sense. Over means over, so overlook. Uh, pre is before, so prefix is the part of the word before the actual uh, root word. Re means to do that again, so return is turn again. Semi means half, okay, so semicircle is half a circle. Um, sub means under, submarine means under uh, the water. Super means above, superstar. Trans means across, so transport is going across something. Un means not, so unfriendly is somebody who's not friendly. Under, uh, same idea here, means under C. Okay, and this is, again, here's the little asterisk, the most frequent uh, prefixes, and we're talking about 97. Looking at some of the suffixes, I like to think of suffixes as the part of the word, obviously, after the root word, but these change what type of uh, like language arts or English word they are, okay? So it could make it an action word or a verb, or it could make it a, a plural word or a uh, past tense word or something like that, okay? So let's look at this one. Able and able, comfortable meaning it, it can, can be done. So comfortable means it is, has comfort within it. A-L and I-A-L is characteristic of, so personal, characteristic of a person. E-D, you add E-D to the end of any word uh, or most words, it's going to make that word past tense. So hop, hopped, okay? E-N is made of, so wooden is made of wood. E-R is uh, a comparative, so higher. You're going to think of like high, higher, highest. These are all suffixes and they're adding to your vocabulary, okay? Uh, E-S-T, again, that would be, um, oop, I skipped one. E-R is one who does, so like worker, 
one who works, actor, one who acts. Uh, EST is a comparative. That's the most that it could be. Okay, so you have your uh, big, bigger, and then example here, biggest. Full, F-U-L, is um, being full of, so careful is full of care. Uh, I-C is a characteristic of, so linguistic is a characteristic of a language. Okay, I-N-G, make it a, this big fancy word, present participle. I think of this as your verb form. Okay, hold up a second. This is Mr. Mr. Marshall. Marshall, what's up? To send a voicemail, press two. Hello, Marshall. Hello. Yeah. Are you in? Hello. Hello, Marshall. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Marshall, you got to go to the same email every single time and click on the same link, okay? Yeah. Okay. Are right, you right, just find that same email as last time, okay? And then I'll pop okay. you in, all right? If 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 you're if you're in there in the queue and I don't see you, please call again, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. All right, see you in a minute. All right, sorry about that, guys. So we are moving. You can see this now, right? Um, so your verb form or your present participle run turns to running, uh, I O N T I O N A T I O N I T I O N. This is the act of, so occasion, attraction, the act of being attracted, I T Y or T Y a state of infinity, a state of being infinite, I V E A T I V E I T I V E is the adjective form. So plaintiff. Um, your L-E-S-S at the end is without, so fearless is without fear. Again, kind of like math. L-Y is characteristic of, so quick, quickly. Uh, M-E-N-T is the action or process of, so enjoyment is a process of uh, the ability to enjoy. N-E-S-S is the state of a condition of, um, so kindness is the state of being kind. Same with these next one. Uh, possessing the quality of is O-U-S, E-O-U-S, or I-O-U-S, joyous, um, having that, uh, possessing the quality of joy. S and E-S words are plurals, or making it more than one. So your book turns to books, your box turns to boxes. Um, your Y is uh, characterized by, so happy is a good example of that. All right, so I would like to, I'm stopping sharing real quick. We are going to go to share. I want to show you just, I think, one YouTube, just to recap this, and then we'll, we'll, um, we will start practicing these. That's golf. There we go. All right, so we're looking at this one, prefixes and suffixes. Uh, and then next, not next week, this Thursday, we're going to look at Latin and Greek root words. Those are going to also help. This is basically a, a, a on IXL, we'll look at, it is a um, vocabulary building week for sure. So let's look at this. You guys can see this, correct? Yeah. All right, sweet. What is this here? No, I do not want to try that. Thank you. One way to better understand the meaning behind words is to look at the different parts of each word and understand each part's meaning separately like squares in a patchwork quilt. Many English words are made by taking basic words and adding combinations to the beginning or end of the word to change the meaning. The basic word is called the root word and the added portion is called the affix. 
There are three main affixes we use, prefixes, suffixes, and infixes. An affix added to the front of a word is known as a prefix. Pre means before, so that makes sense, right? Before the word. One added to the back of a word is the suffix. Guess where an infix appears? In the middle! That's right, the middle of the word. Let's start by talking about prefixes. The four most common prefixes are dis, in, re, and un. Let me show you what I mean. The word form can mean to create something. If you add the prefix re to the beginning of the word, we get the word reform, which means to form over again. In fact, re is connected to an original Latin word, which means again. If you add it to say or do, you would get the same effect. Re-say means to say something over again. Redo means to do something over again. Can you spot the prefix in the word disclaim? Dis. Dis is a Latin prefix that functions like a negative. Often, if you see dis, you can put not in its place. Discontent means not content. Disability means lacking ability. Disbelief means not believing, and so on. Disclaim means to not claim, to deny or refuse to acknowledge. Now that you have a good idea of what a prefix is, let's talk about suffixes. Like I mentioned before, an affix at the back of a word is a suffix. The four most common suffixes are ed, ing, ly, and es. Let's look at each of these suffixes attached to the root word love for illustration. If you added the first, you would get the word loved, a past tense verb of the root word. The second suffix gives us loving, the third lovely, and the fourth loves. Each suffix changes the meaning of the word slightly while maintaining the root meaning of the word love. Now let's talk about the third kind of affix, infixes. Infixes go inside the word. There are actually very few infixes in the English language, but you will see them with certain plural words. Let's look at the word cupful and the word passerby as examples. How would you make these two words plural? Contrary to what you may be used to saying, it's incorrect to say cupfuls and passerbys. The correct English plural for these words is cupsful and passersby. The infix s appears in the middle of both words. Before we leave our topics of affix, we don't see those too many middle guys. of both words. Before we leave our topics of affixes, let's talk about one area of grammar that often gets lumped into the affix category. Combining forms. A combining form is a form of a word that only appears as a part of another word. Think of the word clockwise. Wise is an adverb combining form that helps tell us the direction of the action. And the word photograph, graph, is actually a noun combining form that tacks onto the word photo to make a new word. These aren't affixes exactly. They have more substance. Unlike affixes, combining forms can actually connect with an affix to form a real word. While you can't put dis and re together to make a word, you can put wise and ly together and you'll get the word wisely. Overall, prefixes, suffixes, and infixes are small add-ons to root words. Combining forms are slightly larger add-ons that often have some standalone quality. Understanding the various parts of words like this helps us understand the overall meaning of the word. I hope that this overview was helpful. Yeah, it was huge. All right, so I will download I think I can download this, but this is um, a PowerPoint basically about prefixes, suffixes, and affixes. So we're going to buzz through it because we just heard it, but repetition is, you know, the key to all learning. And we're going to then do some practicing. So we talked about root words and base words. Root words and base words are the same. Okay. You can use them interchangeably. Um, and that would be the basic, most basic part of the word. Uh, when you add an affix, um, which is either before or after, you're 
you're going to change the meaning of the word, okay? Uh, we talked about affixes and they can be, she included another version. We're gonna really focus on prefixes and suffixes, okay? Uh, and the example here would be you have cook, you could say uncooked, you know, it would have your affix, your prefix, and then your suffix, okay? Uh, and you know that pre happens before the word, the root word, and then the end of the word is going to be the suffix, okay? Like we just said a second ago, the prefix is the beginning, and the suffix is the end, so that would be the ed in uncooked. Um, and then we are going to know that the meaning changes. So prefix im means not. So impossible, not possible. Impolite, not polite. Uh, in meaning not invisible. You can't see it. And infamous means famous for a bad reason. That would be, this is a picture of all of the um, kind of the bad guys of Disney. All right. Uh, your non, non-stop means not stopping. Non-stick means it won't stick to. Um, the particular cookware there. Um, some more prefixes, dis meaning not, disorganized, not organized, disobey means not um, being able to obey and you got a kid sitting outside a principal's office. Uh, miss means wrong, so misread, you didn't read it right, okay? You don't wanna build the roof before you build the foundation. Uh, misspelling, and there's an example here, I can spell good, can with a K-A-N and good, G-U-D, which is ridiculous. Um, the prefix un meaning not, so unlucky, <clears throat> not lucky, unbelievable, not believable. Uh, moving on to over, over meaning too much, overcooked, that would be disgusting, that piece of chicken I think it is. And then over dramatic is somebody who's too dramatic. Under, uh, underneath, or beneath or under, underwear, that goes beneath your clothing. Underwater goes beneath the water. Uh, another prefix, re, okay? Uh, we have recycle, that means to do it again. I wanna find some suffixes. It's a lot of prefixes. I'm just gonna go through here like, oh, here we have some suffixes, yay. Sorry. ER means uh, one who takes part in, so teacher, somebody who teaches, driver, uh, somebody who drives. Your, uh, again, EST means the most of something. So your smallest is the, literally the most small. Uh, your strongest is uh, the most strong. Okay, ED makes a past tense. So play, played, uh, that, you, that you had played it, race, raced. Um, ing means to be currently doing it. So sing turns to singing, dance turns to dancing. It's that action of. Uh, your ly is uh, meaning like. So cowardly is like a coward. Happily is like somebody who's happy with a cow with a grin. Uh, I O N T I O N, we talked about that. That means the action of. Construction means to construct something, having that action. Able and ible means having the ability to do so. So something cleanable, you can clean it. Something readable, you can read it. Uh, N-E-S-S -S is uh, the state of, so happiness, state of being happy. Craziness, state of being crazy. Um, and you get the hint. What I will do is um, upload that to you as well, guys, okay? The PowerPoint? Yes, I okay. think I can download it. So I'll download it and I'll download that whole, it's 69 slides, okay? So let me stop sharing really quick, okay? And then what I wanna do is share my okay. Let me show you. Let's let's actually put this into practice. Um, so you can see this, right? Learning on IXL. And let's go to right section, the language arts section. And help me out with some of these. We're gonna to go to literally third grade. We're not gonna get crazy, just practicing together. 
We might move up. We'll see. Going to go to re. Um, I'm sorry, vocabulary, which has this huge section of prefixes. Okay. Um, but we're going to kind of skip each one. We're not going to do each one, but we are going to probably do the first and the last two. So we are going to help me identify the parts here. Okay, whether it's prefix, suffix, or the base word. So we're looking for the base word for strangely, which is it? Can't see your screen strange. properly. You can't see it? No. It's, it's zoomed in too, um, too much. That must be yeah. your device because if you, if you have it. a phone, if you pinch it, it'll be it. Okay. I got it. Thank you. All right. Sweet. So base word for strangely, what's our, what's the most important part of that word? Strange. Strange. Okay. Sweet. Uh, next one. Uh, we're looking for the base word for misnamed. Named. Sweet. Looking for the suffix for arrangement. Arrange. So the suffix. We're looking for the. the oh, the oh end meant. Yes. Meant. Sweet. So they're trying to trick you. Base word for misdial. Dial. Very good. Awesome. That one's a tough one because they're almost the same letters. Um, was the prefix for re enter? Re. Re. Perfect. Perfect. Looking for the base word for reopens. Opens. Opens. Sweet. Looking for the base word for reseal. Seal. Ooh, I have a great. question. Uh huh. Um. So, like, for reopens, like, wouldn't the base word technically just be open since s is technically a suffix? Um. Yes, because yeah, you're right. It's go that actually has a two two affixes as we call that a prefix and a suffix. So you're right. It should be just open. Okay. So very good. Sometimes I, you can sometimes I've taken screenshots. IXL is not 100%. They always are having people help them out. So that would be one where we could take a screenshot and email them and be like, hey, um, what's the prefix for re-enter? Re. Yes. Looking for the base word for wisely. Wise. wise. Very good. Awesome. Uh, what's the base word for retells? Tells. Sweet. Uh, looking for the base word for pre washes. 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 And you're right on that one again. That should really technically be. Wash. Wash. <laughs> so that, like, hey, that proves to me that you you're at, you, you know you got this. You're you're you might you're definitely moving past this level. Um, what is the base word for suddenly? Sudden. Sudden. Sweet. And then you got it. We are going to do the base word for premix. Premix. No mix. Sorry. Yes. 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 Very good. Very good. So let's go, I'm gonna go back to that section and we'll identify. Uh, da, 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 da. I wanted to, let's do this number two and then I think we'll do number. Okay, we'll do the meeting one too, maybe eight, nine and 10, we'll see. We're gonna do number two, actually, we're gonna go straight to determining the meaning. So we want to, when we're reading, and again, we're gonna start with this easy stuff that we probably already know, but this is gonna build your vocabulary. So when you're reading the test, the GED or the tape test, and you're coming up with a word that's like, huh, I don't know that. If you can break down some of it and get just a basic idea of what the heck is going on in that section, you are gonna be much more apt to do well on that test or at least have a a, a better um, ability to guess, okay? What does rebuild mean? Build again or result of building? Build again. Yes, 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 because re means to do again. What does skillful, um, is that too far in if I zoom? 
was. No, you're fine. Full right, of what skill. Does skillfully mean? Yes, full of skill. Very good. Um, what does pre read mean? Read beforehand or able to read? Read before. Read before. Read before is right. What would it be if it was going to be able to read? Read a. Readable. 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 Awesome. Next one. What does neatly mean? Able to be neat or in a neat way? In, in a neat, neat way. way. Yes. Uh, what does tiredness mean? Able the state to be of being tired. Yes. State of being tired. Very good. Okay. Uh, this wouldn't even tiredable. <laughs> 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 wouldn't even be a thing. Uh, misbehave. Have, behave poorly or the result of behaving? Behave poorly? Um, yes. Because miss means to, to do it wrongly. Not. Okay. So uh, the act of change, and we're looking at changeable. The act of changing or able to be changed? Able to be changed. Very good. Awesome. What does breathless mean? The result of having breath? or uh, without breath? Without so, breath. Very good. All right, what does placement mean? Place again or the result of placing? The result, the result of placing. Yes, very good. We're gonna add a couple more here. What does reopen mean? The action of opening, open before or open again? Open again. The yeah. Reopen quickly in a quick way, the state of being quick or without quickness? The state of being quick? Yes. See? Killing it. Oh, no, it's wrong. No, it was in a quick way. <laughs> no. yeah. I was going to say. I clicked the wrong one. You can't, you, you can't get it right if you say the right thing and you don't click the right thing. Right. So, <laughs> that'll, t that'll teach me to stop rushing around. <laughs> what does pre-test mean? Test before or test poorly? Test, test before. before. That's like that tape test is your, is your pre-test. You test before you actually take the, the uh, class. Fearful, the act of fearing or without fear or full of fear? Full of fear. Full of fear? Yes, full of fear. Yeah, fearful. Wonderful. Uh, Sureness, without being sure, the action of being sure, or the state of being sure. The state, the state, of, being state of being sure. sure. Right. Yeah, the state. Very, very good. The state. All right, we'll do a couple more. These are good. What does misuse mean? Use before, use incorrectly, or use again? Use, use incorrectly. Right. Yes, use incorrectly. Very good. Uh, readable, we looked at that. Read again, ability to read, or read incorrectly? Able to read. Great. Sweet, able to read. Very nice. All right, so we'll do uh, one more here. What does retry mean? Try poorly, result of trying, or try again? Try, try again. again. Very good. Um, our next section, Ooh, Jason wants to be admitted. Sweet, Jason is here too. Just give me one second. All right, I'm gonna go back to that third grade section of prefixes, suffixes, and we're gonna look at um, sorting words uh, by the meaning. So we'll, hopefully you'll start to see patterns on this for sure. Okay, so if we're looking at suffix that means most and then prefix that means not, we're going to see two and two, okay? Um, so non-living, richest, non-stick, or blackest. What are you talking about? I would say so non-living and non-stick go in prefix that means not. Yes, so non, anything that begins with non means not, okay? And then anything ending in EST the okay, suffix. is most. going to be your, the most suffix. that it could be. So you could be rich, richer, and then your most is the richest, okay? Um, so the, it's just helping us to be able to see those patterns, I think. 
We're looking at suffix that mean one who does an action or a prefix means opposite or reverse. So worker, unzip, and unlock, catcher. Worker and catcher is uh, suffixes and unzip and unlock is prefixes. Very good. Okay, so again, catcher, one who catches, work, one who, worker means one who works. Uh, unzip means to, to take, open up and unlock means to um, unlock. All right, fantastic. All right, this next one means to, a prefix that means incorrectly or poorly or a suffix that means female. So pre, uh, the prefix mishear or mistreat. And then you have your, uh, I gave you the answer, I'm sorry. Princess, princess and lioness lion. suffixes. <laughs> They're suffixes. Oh, geez. Well, <laughs> don't tell my boss. <laughs> yeah, so we know that this means to do something incorrectly. So treat somebody incorrectly, hear something incorrectly. This means female, so princess is feminine. And then your lioness would be the female lion, okay? Okay, we're looking at suffix that means one who does an action and then the prefix who means, uh, which means before. So premix and, um, hold on, premix is a, it's a suffix, I think. No, it's, it would be a Pre. Oh, pre, yes. No. It's a prefix. I'm sorry. Yeah, no biggie. And prepare is prefixes. So, yes, means beforehand. So, prepay, pay yes. beforehand. Mix, premix means mix beforehand. Um, here's your suffix. suffixes visitor, somebody who visits, and a collector, somebody who collects. Collects. You didn't think you guys were going to have this much fun today, did you? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Suffix means, uh, that means throughout, or a prefix that means not or opposite. Disable and disappear are prefixes. Yeah. And then... Statewide and citywide is suffixes. So, yeah. So, citywide would mean means throughout the city, and then statewide means throughout the state. Disappear and disbelief, that would be the opposite of each of those. Uh, disappear means to not be there, and then uh, disbelieve means to not believe. Let's do a couple more. All right, so we're looking at a suffix that means from or relating to, or a prefix that means not. Unhappy and unwell or prefixes. Yes, they are. And then... Egyptian and Bostonians are suffixes. So you are talking about an Egyptian from Egypt and a Bostonian from the best from city Boston. in the world. <laughs> 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 My favorite baseball team. Are you All a right. Red Sox fan? Huge, huge. <laughs> Don't I have it in the background? Uh, duh, yes. <laughs> I hope so. I need to, uh, let me stop sharing for a second and see. It should be right in the background. There it is. Yep, there it is. <laughs> All right. Let's look real quick at, I want to do the a ninth grade level, okay? Uh, which will be super fun. Muy, muy fun. All right, so purple ninth grade. Looking at the reading section. I'm sorry, I keep saying reading. Vocabulary building. This is where we're hanging out for a minute, okay? This week, at least. We're looking at vocab right now right? Uh, vocabulary, prefix, suffixes, and then we're going to, this is, this is tough, but this is very effective, the Greek, Greek and um, Latin roots, okay? Um, what are these word patterns? So when we're practicing on IXL, does it matter what grade we do? So what I want you to do is, I always start low, and like we were doing that together, and we we're getting like 10 in a row correct. Move up a grade and do the same one. And then continue to move okay. up grade, and your goal is to be uh, right here, 9 through 12. Really, if you can master topics at 9 through 12, um, you know, you continually and consistently do that. That's totally awesome. And once everybody gets through those diagnostic tests, I should see a lot more uh, participation because this week, uh, when I did my attendance this morning, because I did it late, I'm not going to lie, 
between everybody, I only had 11 hours and I have 15 students. So that means and I had one student do four hours in 15 minutes and then another one, four hours. So some of us are, I got one that was less than a minute <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's not like school anymore. I got the exact minutes that you were on here. <laughs> so, and that's something. So, what? Yeah, I have the exact minutes, so I can't lie to the state. It has nothing to do. You. I don't make any judgments. All right, so let's try to do this. This is the same idea. We're breaking down the meaning of a word pattern, okay? So if we have a fanatic, right? And then somebody would be fanatical. Your, your, her your heretic would be what? Heretical. So basically it's seeing, seeing the change in the suffix here or prefix, okay? Uh, fanatic means a fan of something. That's where we get the word fan. A heretic means somebody who's not, like believes the opposite of whatever the church believes. So that would be, this would be a type of belief that would be contradictory to the church. You all can see this, right? I always ask that because I don't want to be too- Yeah, right. Yeah. So reverse, reversible, submerse. What do you think? Submersible, I think it is. I might spell it wrong. Yeah, I spelled it wrong. I'm a super good speller. Uh, obese, obesity. So it's a state of being obese. Pure. What would it be? Purity. Thought I heard. If not, I just gave you the answer. Purity. All right. So let me get. Friend, friend okay. So friend turns to friendship. The act of having a friend, kin, which means family, is what? It's not a common word, but it's kin. We're just really adding ship to the end of this. Kinship. I mean, the act of being family. Very well done. Trauma, 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 traumatic. Cinema, cine, cinematic. Are you guys seeing the patterns here? Mm -hmm. You just have to spell it right. Partner, partnership, citizen, citizenship. Yes. You gotta, it's like a little lag. Citizenship. Good work. Conclude, conclusion, include, inclusion. Jun. Yes, inclusion. And this is where we, we can look at other words and we can, again, get some sort of, 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 of meaning. So if a concluding something means wrap it up and then a conclusion is that like a summary of something. Include, you include everyone. So inclusion is the process of doing that. That's a funny word we use in education all the time for you know, uh, including all students into one classroom, whether they have some sort of label or not. That's called inclusion. There's always a push for that. Next one, critical, critic, skeptical. Skeptic. Skeptic. Super duper. Um, pre uh, precise turns to precision, and then concise, concision. concision. Apparently, that's right. Good job. Infant, infancy, resident, residency. Yes. What time is it? Oh, so we have ten yeah. minutes. We'll do one or two more, and then you guys are gonna have a little break before you do mathematicas. Circle, circular, rectangle, rec rectangular. rectangular, rectangular. I didn't spell it right. You got to spell it right. Uh, geology, geologist, botany, botanist. botanist. Fantastic. Uh, usable, usability, pliable. 
pliability. Keep it up. All right. So let's get back on to stop sharing. Sharing's caring. So um, I know Sheila, you just popped in, which is totally fine. I'm going to, this is being recorded. And as soon as it's done, I'm going to try to upload it either tonight or tomorrow morning to YouTube. So you have your lesson and I'll include for everybody um, probably five or six different attachments, a PowerPoint, uh, what I like to call a cheat sheet. It's not cheating. It's the only time I want you to cheat. You're going to print out or use the, the sheet that I showed you. I'll actually, I'll share it on that. This sheet right here. Uh, where is it? So we looked at this specific most common prefixes, most common suffixes. That's something that I consider to be like, a document that would, would be almost like the full lesson, right? That's a cheat sheet. I like to call that a cheat sheet. You can use that on IXL, print it out, utilize it, get two screens, whatever you need to do. Use the information given so it's much easier for you when you're looking at the IXL sections and one comes with a pre at the beginning. You can look at your document and see pre means before. Um, it makes it easier. You'll start to see the patterns better. All right. So you have eight minutes before you do math. Um, I'm going to stick on here just for a minute. If you have any questions, comments for me, again, if you weren't here the other day, um, I accidentally did not tape the Florida lesson. I will retape it by myself and upload that again with the um, appropriate attachments for that. I'm sorry. Um, I was so good at technology Thursday that I taped myself for one minute instead of the 50 minutes. Um, but uh, again, we will see you Thursday. We're going to look at Greek and Latin roots. And I will be continuing to assign if you want to check out um, the newsela.com. Get on that newsela.com. Look at those um, assignments. If you don't want to do the assignments, totally fine. You can read whatever you want to read. I only assign uh, the assignments that I think are like interesting um, and uh, kind of give you a starting or a uh, starting off point. It's not necessary. If you want to read another topic, totally cool. All right. Thank you, my friends. Good luck with math. Say a little prayer for you. Okay. See you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Sheila, are you, I can't hear you. You got to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. What's going on? Everything is good. What actually can I work on for is the social studies? Anything particular? So you have social studies section on IXL.com. Okay. As well as reading anything that's social studies based on newsela.com. So that would be really focused on like American civics, the government, economics, things like that. That's going to be your social studies section. Okay. Okay. Right. And if you want anything more specific, I, that's, I have my degrees in social studies. So I usually assign something that has to do with social studies, geography. Perfect. History, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you can send me that, that'll be perfect. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Did you get onto New ELA fine or no? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Yes. So I would, I would spend um, uh, time at least one, uh, you know, every day, every other day, spend some time on reading specific social studies content. Cause that, that's basically what you're going to see on the GED articles about social studies, article about history, geography, whatever it is. Okay. So, um, you're going to do that. All right. Okay. Cause I took the practice uh -huh. and I scored 137. I like, and so it's only a matter of seven or eight more points, which, okay. is not, which is not crazy. It could be just a bad day you had, you know? Yes. So it, it's not necessarily about, in that case, it's not building the background knowledge necessarily. It's about building um, that reading, kind of reading quicker and yes. more precise and to comprehend better. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll see ya.
stay. Yeah. Have a one. Bye bye.